One of the things I wish I would have learned earlier throughout my career working in tech as a software developer and other roles as well is Python. Now, this is because Python is extremely versatile and I waited a little too long. I mean, it's never too late, but I do wish I would have learned it sooner. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I would learn Python if I was to do it all over again. After this video, you will have, the goal is that you will have the tools you need to quickly learn Python. I mean, even at the end of this video, you should have a solid understanding as to what Python is, why it is important to use, not only if you are a developer, but maybe you are more on the data science side of things. Maybe you are a project manager. All roles really nowadays touch Python or many do anyways. And if they don't directly, having an understanding of it is so crucial. All right, let's dive into it. Before we do, you know the drill, hit that subscribe button and leave in the comments other videos you want to see. Oh, and shout out to some of these subscribers here. Thank you for your constant feedback, comments, questions, love. I love you all so much. That's why I make these videos is in hopes to provide you some value and education on your journey and to make it feel like you're not so alone because we are on it together. Okay, now that I did my, my ramble, let's really get into it. First up, let's take a step back and understand Python's history and the reasoning as to why it was created in the first place. Python was created actually back in the 1990s, or that's when it was first released. And however, it really started gaining widespread popularity around the mid 2000s. Up until then, it wasn't really used very much. Now, there are a few reasons as to why Python really started to gain popularity around the mid 2000s. One is the rise of web development frameworks became more popular like Django, which was released in 2005. Another is because the increased adoption in scientific computing with libraries like NumPy and SciPy. So really around the mid early 2000s, we started to slowly see this increase in need around data science in particular. And with that came Python. Outside of data science, so another area that started to slowly gain, gain, gain traction was around AI and machine learning where Python is not necessarily the most dominant language in that field, but it definitely is used, especially for people who are just starting out. Now, as a side note, I think one of the big reasons, aside from it being really resourceful and useful for a lot of these areas, that it became popular is simply because it was very easy or is very easy to pick up. Unlike other programming languages, say C, C Sharp, that you know, even Java that take quite a bit of time to really master. Python is a language that if you are someone who's never programmed before, you can really pick it up pretty quickly, which is really nice. It's very readable. Uh, it's a fun language to play around with, which makes it easier to learn. Which really brings us to our next point, which is why is Python a great programming language? Why has it gained popularity? Well, we just listed one, which is around readability. It's really easy to pick up and start building with. Another is it's versatile. I mean, even we just shared, it can be used in data science projects, machine learning projects, web development. I've built so many fun games using Pygame, different libraries or modules within Python, that the versatility of it really has expanded it to become one of the world's most popular popular programming languages. Okay, now that we have a bit of history and uh, understanding as to where Python came from, why it is so popular, let's dive into how would you start learning it today? Well, first step is let's ensure it is installed on your computer. We'll do it two ways, one with a Mac and then the next with a Windows machine. First up, I have a Mac, so let's do that first. So Mac OS typically comes with Python pre-installed, but it usually is an older version. So here is what you would do if you don't have it installed for whatever reason, or it's an older version. First up is make sure you install Homebrew if you don't have it installed already. Here is the command. Once Homebrew is installed, type the following, and then finally verify the installation with the following. Now, if you have any troubles with installation for whatever reason, Python has so much great documentation on its site or different forums. So don't stress, pause this video and start doing your own research. It really, it, the, the community around Python is massive and you won't have any trouble finding support. Okay, let's quickly cover Windows as well. Here are the steps listed for downloading it or installing it on a Windows computer. Uh, once again, it's very simple, very straightforward. And make sure though to verify installation, do the following command. Now the next step is you have to ensure you have a code editor installed. For this, I mean, I would just ensure you have VS Code installed. If you don't, go to VS Code's website. Once again, it's a very simple, straightforward process. I'm sure most of you watching this video do have it installed already though. 
All right, now let's get into the good stuff. Let's start with the basics. You already have it installed. That is a win in itself. What should you learn first? Well, as I mentioned, we need to start with the basics, the fundamentals. First, you have to do the classic print hello world. Here's what you type in, run it in VS Code, just simply right click, click run in terminal, Python in terminal, and it will run for you. Super straightforward. Next though, let's go through some of the fundamentals past just printing out text on screen. Here are a few key core things, key core things. Here are a few core things you really need to understand. One is variables, which are essentially you can think of as containers for storing data values. The next is data types, which is categories of data like integers, floats, strings, booleans. Then we have control structures, which is tools for controlling the flow of your program, including if statements and loops. And we have functions, which are reusable blocks of code that perform specific tasks. Now, if you are someone who has programmed in the past, these shouldn't sound too too strange to you. You should be familiar with most of these, just applying them to Python. So let's use an example. Let's do a simple temperature converter. I mean, I'm in Canada here, so we are in Celsius. Oftentimes I am speaking with Americans who are in Fahrenheit and I always get it confused. So here's a simple uh, project that you can input into your uh, file. So if you have VS Code open, create a new file, let's call it main.py, main.py, and type in the following. Now this code here, simply to run it, right click again, run in terminal, and you will see that it printed out. Pretty cool. Next thing we really need to dive into is data structures. Now, data structures are really important because they are a way of organizing and storing data. I mean, data is the heartbeat of, well, building many different projects. It's extremely important to really have a good understanding of this. Also, it's important to note, Python has a few built-in data structures. Okay, the first one is lists, which are ordered. Mutable collections of items, just like a typical list. Then we have uh, dictionaries, which are key value pairs for a fast lookup. And we have sets, which are unordered collections of unique items. Now, as I mentioned, understanding these are really important as they form the backbone of how we work with data in Python. So let's go through, let's test out a real world example or build something with this. Type in this code now, clear your co previous code, type in this code and let's run it. This is a simple to do app. I mean. We're not even 10 minutes into this video and you've already created two different Python scripts and ran them. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. Next up, it's important to note that Python is an OOP or object oriented programming language. So why is this important? Well, for one thing, there are a few rules for object oriented programming languages that apply to most of them, if not all. Here are a few things to keep in mind. With OOP, it is based on the concept of objects essentially. And this is really key because it contains these objects are the ones that contain the data and code. So I'm trying to think of a way of explaining it that's not using the word containers or whatnot, but just objects, especially if you're familiar with other programming languages. Now, the key ideas in OOP are the following. One is classes, which are blueprints for creating objects. Another is objects, which you can think of are instances of these classes. Then we have inheritance which is a mechanism for code reuse. So uh, your code might inherit uh, you know, data from another piece of code. Then we have polymorphism, which is the ability of objects to take on multiple forms. Now stay with me here. I know it might sound very wishy-washy just hearing these terms, but it's important to start familiarizing yourself with these terms as step one. As you start building with them, you'll really have these aha moments where it clicks for you and like, oh yeah, okay, I get what she's talking about now. Which brings me to, here's a great example, pause this video. It, we are going to make a quick, simple bank account system that really demonstrates or hones in on a lot of these concepts. So pause the video here, follow this code here, and this will really cover a lot of the really basics when it comes to object-oriented programming. And then once again, run the code. In your VS Code, right click, run in terminal. Which really brings me to step number five, which is work on projects. You need to build real world projects. Now there are so many resources or places to start taking tutorials. I would honestly, this is how I would do it all over again. I would do exactly what we just went through. Start by running the code that I shared with you to get like familiarized with it, then take a tutorial. Now there are a few places where I really enjoy taking tutorials. I went down way too many rabbit holes, took way too many tutorials, don't do that. Focus on a few, and here are a few really good ones. One is Codecademy, I love Codecademy, they have great resources. Uh, another one is RealPython. I still use RealPython today if I'm looking up something or wanna build a very specific project. The other one is PyBytes. Now, I haven't been on PyBytes for a while, let me go on it. 
I think it's free still. I think it's still free, but don't quote me on that. You have to check it out. But I know, for example, Code Canopy, they have a lot of great free resources for Python. Also to uh, free Code Camp is still an amazing resource for really learning any programming language, including Python. Next up, once you have taken some tutorials, gotten really comfortable with that, spend quite a bit of time really understanding those basics and fundamentals, then it is time to move on to learn a framework. Now, bear with me here or, or stay with me here because this is really key. There are a ton of different frameworks you can learn. The real challenge comes down to narrowing in on one that you really believe in or want to stick with. And, and you really need to, I'll put up on screen here, three really popular ones. One being Django, which is more a high level web framework that encourages you to build quickly and clean. The other of course is Pandas, which is more around the data analysis side of things. And the last one is Flask, which is a lightweight framework. So it really depends, do your research, take a step back and think, why are you learning Python? Because that will really depict what framework you learn. Up until this point, regardless of why you're learning Python, learn all these steps. But when it comes to a framework, make sure you have an understanding as to what the first anyways particular use case you want to use Python for is. Lastly, and honestly, this is the easiest one, but it's something that so many people don't do, which is join a community. Join an online community of Python developers, people who are learning Python. It is essential, 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 whatever. I'm so passionate about it, that's why I'm doing the essential, to join a community because that is the only way, in my opinion, you will stick with learning. It is so important to have others around you, even virtually, so you can share your wins, share your challenges together. Now, here are a few uh, communities that are really great to join. I think it's just a great way to get part of a community, meet new people, and who knows, maybe you'll find a new job throughout these communities. All right, that was good. I feel like we covered a lot in a very short amount of time. I hope you enjoy this video and make sure to give this a thumbs up if you learned something new through it. Leave in the comments what we should learn together next or do with this Learn With Me series. Python is one of the best things I have ever learned, honestly, because although I never used it in my uh, software development career. I use it all the time now to tinker and build with different projects, especially as I'm taking my AI and machine learning uh, post-grad course. Knowing Python and going into that course with it was extremely helpful, so I can't recommend it enough. Okay, time for you to go build. I'll see you all next time.